The line between a dirt bike and a dual sport is easy. A dual sport is simply a dirt bike with lights, turn signals, and a horn. It has DOT tires. Everything to make it road legal. With a dual sport, you should be able to walk right up to the DMV window and get a plate and walk away again. The line between a dual sport and an adventure bike is a bit fuzzier. <laughs> Adventure bikes are usually defined as being outfitted for longer trips involving both paved and dirt road riding. And when we say dirt road, we're talking about jeep roads, gravel roads, double track, something a 4x4 could manage. Also, adventure bikes normally have 50-50 DOT tires, cushy seats, a windscreen of some sort, and they carry 4-6 to six gallons of fuel, enough to make it between gas stations in remote areas. Some like to argue that true adventure bikes are multi-cylinder machines weighing in at over 400 pounds. I think that's BMW's marketing department working overtime trying to talk you into something that's not necessarily true. And besides, if you think about it, the Honda 250L Rally and the brand new KTM 390 Adventure, those guys might disagree with your definition. And those are just the bikes that the factories have designated as adventure bikes. Try to argue that only bikes with the words adventure or rally in their names can claim the title of an honest adventure bike, and a thousand KLR, DRZ, and XR riders will rise up and burn your house down. Out of the box, the CRF 450L is a straight up dual sport bike with an emphasis on sport. It features a slightly detuned Unicam race motor capable of 50 plus horsepower in a sub 300 pound machine. It has slightly raked out front fork geometry to stabilize it at road speeds. It has a beefy subframe you could park another motorcycle on. You pay for the sportiness with frequent oil changes and filter changes and regular valve checks. There are always trade-offs, always. I've said, and I maintain, that the CRF 450L is whatever tires you put on it, whether they be slicks or knobbies, and that includes 8020 DOT adventure tires. My CRF 450L is a light adventure bike. You can't talk me out of that, and I don't think you can prove otherwise. But remember, I said my CRF 450L. Just like those guys and gals with pannier racks on their KLRs, my bike was born a dual sport, and I built it into an adventure bike. And while we're talking about building, let's talk about the cost of my unique and one-of-a-kind can't-buy-out-the-showroom floor motorcycle. Or not. We spend money on what we love to the extent that we are able, whether that's cars or computers or horses. And don't get me started on horses. Spend the money, climb the mountain, follow your heart, Never do the math. So if the definition of an adventure bike is a fully road legal motorcycle capable of both on and off road riding, a cushy seat to crank out hundreds of road miles on, a windscreen, luggage to carry camping gear, tools, and a change of clothes, enough gas carrying capacity to make it from one station to the next, Heated hand grips and enough electrical outlets to power your GPS, phone, and GoPro? Then my CRF450L is an adventure bike. Remember that there are always trade-offs, so I'm not going to try to anger the BMW cultist by saying my motorcycle is just an adventure bike. My bike is an ultralight adventure bike. It's a single cylinder bike under 700 cc's and under 400 pounds. I carry enough gas to get from station to station here in the U.S. I have a windscreen but no cruise control. I have luggage but leave my dinner jacket and the kitchen sink at home. I could ride coast to coast but ride mostly one to two hundred miles of dirt per day over the course of a week or two. Am I comfy cozy falling asleep wrapped in a bubble of music infused calm air as I ride along? No. 
but I've never wanted to be that at ease, that comfortable on a vacation. Being cozy is not in my nature. <laughs> okay? Uh, I don't like vacations that include little pineapple drinks. I like vacations that include storms and weather and being a little freaked out at least. So for me, this is the perfect bike, right? It doesn't matter to me that the fairing doesn't come up to here. Um, it doesn't matter to me that at a little over 300 pounds, this bike gets blown around in the wind. Uh, it's just, it's all part of the experience. The trade-off for all my suffering is that I can dump my bike over and over again and not blow out my back picking it up. And, and this is the point, I get to travel deeper into the back country, down single track, over slick rock, through areas a 600 pound behemoth could never get to. But that's me, and this is my ultralight adventure bike. Thanks for watching.